So the MOSFIS tool is an application that you can run either from a Jupyter Notebook or as a standalone GUI. And it's a tool that is under active development right now at Space Telescope. The idea is to have a, an interface where you can look at a large number of spectra that will be generated by um, your MOS observations. Typically, you can get, you know, maybe 50, or maybe up to 100 spectra in, in an observation. And um, it can be time consuming to look through all those spectra. And this is the idea here is to provide a quick look tool so that you can sort through your spectra, um, maybe even look at redshifts. Um, and, and all of this, this tool is run in, like I said, in a Jupyter notebook environment. Um, uh, it draws on a lot of the other space telescope, um, supported infrastructure, including AstroPy, SpecUtils, some other Python packages on the back end that we use to, um, manipulate the spectra. Um, and like I said, you can also run it as a standalone GUI, but it's nice to be able to work uh, work it in a notebook flow where you can first visualize the spectra and then you can um, pull out your results of your analysis from the tool into the notebook and continue more detailed analysis in your notebook. You can also control things from notebook cells, um, for example, loading data into the MOSFIS tool, um, changing various parameters from the, the notebook cell level. Okay, uh, that's it for the quick introduction. Um, you're going to want to go to the MOSFIS Solutions IPI notebook that I have shown here. Um, it's a pretty short notebook. It's going to be primarily uh, an interactive um, exercise using the, the application in a notebook cell. And uh, the, once I launch, launch MOSFIS, you'll see below there's some UI instructions, some tasks that we're going to run through. And I'd like you to try to follow along, and I'll stop to ask questions as we go. So the data we use is, this time we're using a PRISM data set that has lower dispersion. There are 33 galaxies in this particular set that um, I'm going to be showing a subset of. Uh, the, the simulations include background and also um, the, the, they have been processed using the, the JWC SPEC2 and SPEC3 pipelines in order to create the level 2B and level 3 data products. So there's 2D spectra, the S2D spectra, and then there's the collapsed 1D, extracted 1D spectra. Um, background subtraction was performed on a level 3 data, I believe using master background subtraction. Uh, this one is not subtracted. Um, the flux calibration for these data is not accurate because uh, we don't have on-orbit calibration data to do that. All right, there are very few imports that you need to for this tool. You're going to load the import the JDAVIS suite of tools, which includes MOSFIS. Um, this MOSFIS uh, application can also be used on other multi multiple um, object spectrograph data and nearest data for GRISM data. Um, so it's, it should be uh, applicable also to ground-based data if you have them, but um, it may take some manipulation to get your uh, files and data into the appropriate format to get into the tool. As supporting tools, we're gonna be um, importing some standard uh, Python utilities and also AstroPy units and AstroPy tables so that we can load line lists. All right, to, without further ado, let's go down. Uh, you gotta make sure to run that imports cell first so that everything works. And then we go down to the first cell, which launches the MOSFIS application. Be careful with the capitalization of the application. You need that capital V in the middle and the capital M at the beginning. And then you type MOSFIS app to launch the application. What comes up is a series of panels where you can observe um, you can inspect various data sets. Uh, the heart of this at, for MOSFIS is the table viewer at the bottom. And you'll see in a second when we populate that with data, you can view various sources in your MOS data set um, in the other panels. So as I mentioned, below that cell, you're gonna have um, UI instructions and we'll go through these tasks one at a time. 
All right, so the next thing we want to do is load the data from a cell. This is a little bit of a longer cell than we'd like. It actually is reading the, the directory structure that we have in order to find the, the 1D and 2D spectra. It makes um, a triplet of lists for the 2D spectrum, 1D spectrum, and the cutouts that we've generated. You can actually generate cutouts, for example, from your near cam pre-imaging and, and load them this way. Okay, so run the cell that's below download the data. So by running that cell, we've created the lists of files that we're going to be running. And then you go down to the next cell to actually load the data. You can either do it as a triplet of lists, including the 1D, 2D, and cutouts, or if you uncomment the, the commands below, you can do each of those things one at a time, and they get linked together in the tool. So running that, that's how we get the data in there. You'll see some warnings, which you can ignore for now. And going up to the tool, the data takes, um, oh, one thing to note is that we're only loading 10 of the 33 spectra at this point. So you should see that the, the table is now populated in the MOS viewer. Just a note on the data themselves, as I said, they were simulated data. So the data have been loaded and, and you'll notice that the table has a number of columns. Um, let's click on the end rows. You can click on the third row pull up one of the data sets. And you'll see immediately that there is a 2D image viewer in the upper left. There is a uh, 2D spectrum viewer in the upper right. And then below that is a 1D spectrum viewer. And these are all linked together. So when you select regions in one of them, it applies to all of them for this data set that's selected. Um, one thing you might want to do, depending on how much real estate is on your browser, is to resize these windows, and you can do that by drag dragging on the separators between them. We find that sometimes when they're too narrow, these uh, headers will collapse, and you won't be able to see the tools. So that's one, one way to fix that. And you can resize the, the image viewer as well, so that you have more uh, real estate for the spectrum viewers. All right, um, so we're on task one, and the first thing we did was to load the data and click on the third row. Uh, we're gonna now adjust the display values for the image viewer. You'll see that the, there's a, a slit um, indicated on the viewer. Enables you to see where your, um, your source fell on the slit and what part of the source you're looking at in the spectrum. Okay, so to adjust display values in the image viewer, there's this icon that has the the, sli the three sliders on it, and that will be the display values. You click that, up pops layer and viewer. You're going to primarily be concerned with the layer for this. And layers, you can have multiple layers um, displayed in the viewer. For example, if you want to overlay radio data on optical data, you could do that. But we're not going to go into that here. So for this particular layer, we have selected uh, image to, and that automatically comes up when you click on the one of the table rows. Um, you can turn contours on and off. We're not going to play with that today. Uh, you can manually manually adjust the contrast and the bias with the sliders if you like. You can also go in and change the stretch to logarithmic and linear. Um, you can manually adjust the, the minima and maxima using and that's not very good. Um, I'll go back to linear and do a 99% or something like that. You can also change the color map if you want to. Um, Kind of gray, and you can change that to something like magma. All right, and if you want that that menu to go away, you can click anywhere on the application. And that's important. Um, for example, if you open one of the tools and uh, you want to make that go away, for example, selecting the pan zoom tool, the double arrow, make the X to make that go away, move around without that menu in your way. 
All right, so we've, we've looked at the stretch, changing the stretch and the contrast on the uh, image viewer. You can do the same thing with the 2D spectrum viewer. In the upper right is the same widget. You can go in and change um, stretch, sample. All the things you can do um, with the image viewer, you can do with the 2D spectrum viewer, changing the color map. So. Um, so those are the basic display functions that you want to, to know how to use for the image and 2D spectrum viewers. All right, so far we've gone through task one. All right, so the next task we're going to look at is the um, task two. And this is really simple and straightforward. It's the most simple uh, analysis, so it's not really analysis, but it's a functionality. If you go to this looks like a Lego with a plus at the upper right hand corner. And that contains all of the analysis plugins. And the slit overlay is one of them. You can actually turn it on and off with that checkbox. It goes away. Um, the, other, the other plugins that you can see, the other data analysis applications are more interesting. We're going to go through line analysis and line lists next. All right. So what we want to do with the line analysis, oh, first let's select a, a spectral region. So if you go to the the 1B spectrum viewer, we're going to zoom in on a particular emission line. And to do that, select the um, hammer and screwdriver icon. It has the pan, zoom, and region selection tools. Uh, first, we're going to pan zoom, and like I said, you can select, you can either do this horizontally or vertically only, or you can do both at the same time. I'll select the both at the same time one. And while we're doing that, we want to get rid of that menu so we can see what's going on, so you can hit the X. So in order to um, pan in this window, you click and drag. And you'll notice a warning came up. When you go off the edges of your spectrum, that warning comes up. That the, uh, you can desync the data that way, so be careful with that. Uh, so when that happens, you'll notice that the tracking gets a little bit off between the two. But if they're synced up, you'll note the 1D and the 2D will follow along with each other. You can zoom in uh, in either panel, but here what we're going to do is um, focus on this two micron line here. Zooming in. A slightly annoying thing is that um, the the scrolling, which you use to do the pan, the zooming, is active also for the the Jupyter notebook cell, and that can scroll you inside of the cell. Okay, so we have this line here that we want to select at around two 1.9 microns, and to do that, to make that selection, there's another tool under the hammer and screwdriver. Click that open. There's this vertical blue stripe with red dots in it. That's the <clears throat> spectral re region selection tool. Again, X out that toolbar so you can see what you're doing. I'm going to select this particular line, try to find out what it is. You'll notice when you make a selection up at the very top, there's something that says subset one. That's the name of the spectral region that you selected. And it's, it's common among all the viewers in the tool. We're going to want that when we go and look at the line analysis, which is the next task. So we should now be on um, task four. Selected the spectral region, and we want to measure that line. So the line analysis tool is available in this plug-in tray on the upper right. Click the arrow next to line analysis the menu. You want to make this a little bit wider so that we can see the text in here better. The data we want to uh, measure is this subset one that we selected in the spectrum view. And the program automatically does a, an analysis of the emission line, assuming that there is no continuum. And uh, so you, you would actually want to do a continuum subtraction to get more accurate values. But if you have strong emission lines, this will give you a rough idea. For example, the flux here is in Jansky microns, and you can change the units. 
All right, so, so that flux actually includes um, the continuum as well and for the line flux. Similarly, for the um, equivalent width, that, that should actually be a, a continuum normalized spectrum. It's not, so it's given kind of funky. On the other hand, the Gaussian width is approximately right, except it may be skewed if the if the continuum has shape. Um, it's finding about 0.02 microns for the, the sigma, full width half max of 0.05 microns, and a centroid at 1.92 microns. So we can use this, and I actually didn't create this data set, so it took me a little while to figure out what line this is. Um, it turns out that it's it's um, H alpha, N2, and sulfur 2. And we'll go through the line list next so you can see what other lines are there. So anyway, I before I identified this as a H alpha at 1.92 microns at a redshift of 1.93. So once you have that redshift, you can we can measure another line and see and figure out what that line is. We can use the same subset. We're still, we still have the region selected in the spectrum viewer. So you can just go in. You can actually, if you wanted to adjust the, the uh, region for the first line, you could do that. But also you can move to another line, select it. Alternatively, we could have gone up to the, the subset thing here and done create new and get, gotten a second mission line that we're going to uh, analyze. Anyway, I just moved, I'm using the same subset one and I moved it over to the line at about 1.4 microns here. All right, so if you're ahead of me, what you, you should do after you've selected that region is you need to go to the line analysis tool again. And, uh, and this new line is at 1.466 microns. Armed with that redshift, you can uh, figure out what that line is. The oxygen three line at 5007 plus the other lines that are there, including H beta, another oxygen three line. So now that you know we're looking at high redshift galaxies at about redshift two, you can see that these are some of the optical emission lines that have shifted into near infrared. The O3 complex on the left, the H alpha, Hydrogen um, sulfur two complex on the right, and then there's some infrared lines on the on the far right that I haven't had. Okay, um, the next thing we're going to do is we finished task three and four. Now we're going to go on and use the line list plugin in task five. We've identified the, those two lines, and I'm just going to use that to, for a simple demonstration of um, creating a line list within the GUI. So you want to click on the close the line analysis tool and open the line list tool, right? There's a number of preset line lists that you can use. Um, include common stellar absorption lines, common nebular emission lines, atomic line lists, Sloan line lists, uh, various IR line lists, including the, the hydrogen passion and bracket series, helium lines, molecular hydrogen lines, uh, CO and pH features. So for now, we're going to create our own custom line list. So if you go down below, you'll see there's this custom. You click on that error, arrow, and you'll want to make this a little bit wider so you can see the text. Okay. So all you do is enter a line name, and we're going to start with O three five double O seven. The rest value that we calculated um, that we measured from the analysis tool for the O three line is at one point four six seven microns. So you enter the value unit, hit add line to add that to your list, and you'll see that it shows up the bottom in your list, and also a line pops up in the, in the 1D spectrum. Um, like I said, what we'll want to do have here is a, a redshift um, field where you can enter the redshift and actually put 5007, 0.5007 for the O3 and the redshift, and it'll come up the same way. And we're going to add one more line, and all you do is just uh, use the same field, 
H alpha, observed wavelength 1.923 is roughly what we measured. Add that line, and now you can actually have a list of two lines. You can make them uh, go away by unchecking the checkbox. You can get rid of them all with erase all. You can plot them all. This is just a simple example of two lines. Of course, you can put as many as you want, but that becomes cumbersome after a while. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a notebook cell next. You can also change the, the, the color using the slider here, color that we like, blue. And change the hue that way and the saturation with the slider below like this. That's how you make a custom line list. We're going to hide that. And now we're going to go down to um, the notebook cells below in order to load a line list from the notebook cells. So that's uh, task number six. That cell is actually right below task six. I put it there for convenience rather than in sequence with the other task. Here I've entered some common um, optical lines and also um, infrared line. We have O2 at 3727, the H beta line, the two O3 lines at 4959, and 5.07 angstroms. We're doing these in microns with, since we're dealing with spectra and microns. But you can actually do unit conversion using one of the plugins to change the angstroms. Also specified a redshift for the galaxy here. When we run this cell, you'll see the wavelengths of the lines shifted to the infrared, one micron for the O2 line, up to five microns for the passion alpha line, which actually falls off the, the spectrum, so you don't see it. Um, that the last line, well, let's let's go to the creating an astro pi table first. This is how you populate the line list inside your notebook cell. You use QT table from um, AstroPy. You create a table with the names of the lines that we listed above, and their wavelengths and their redshifts. And you can give the list a name. And when we run this cell, it, it shows the table that's created, the AstroPy table that's created here, with the wavelengths and redshifts of all the lines for that galaxy. And this it's this last line here, this command that loads the line list into MOSFIS, and, it, and the command is MOSFIS.specfiz.loadLineList of LT. And one thing to notice here is that SpecFiz, which is another one of our tools that just looks at a single spectrum, is um, one of the viewers inside of MOSFIS. And so this, it's, we'll see here. This viewer down here on the bottom right is actually an instance of SpecFiz, and so in order to call that particular tool, that's why we have the MOSFIZ.SpecFiz. And then for this uh, tool SpecFiz, we have the command load line list, and it will load these tables into the line list. And so let's look at the result. All right, so you'll see here now that under loaded lines is the second list. We have the custom list that we, we entered manually, and we have this Galaxy 3 list. You can take a look at by an arrow. And these are the list of the lines we've loaded. Um, it's not, the lines don't get automatic, automatically loaded, so what you want to do is hit plot all, and you'll see the new line list that we just loaded over plotted on the, on the spectrum, spectrum viewer. Um, I'm going to get a little, well, real estate here. Oh, now I can't see the checkbox. Um, all right, so in order to make individual lines go away, again, you can uncheck them. We can make each beta go away, make one of the O3 lines go away, except for two. So you're able to control which lines are showing here. Again, you can also change the like whatever you want. You'll notice we left the, the H alpha line in blue custom line list for both sets of lines. And if you have multiple line lists, they'll all show up there. So you want to um, change the colors so each of them are distinct. Um, all right, so I think that goes through most of the tasks that we've had here. Um, plot all, erase all, to make the, the lines appear on there. Spectrum 1D viewer. Um, 
couple more tasks that we're going to do to, to, to round out this, this presentation. So if you go down below at the bottom of the notebook, go past all these warnings. Now, naturally, when you get your MOS data set, there will not be a uh, image cutouts for you. Um, you're going to have to use your HST or, or near cam pre-imaging to create them yourself, or we're looking into the possibility of actually just loading one image for the field of view that will um, overlay all this, the slits on the same field of view, but that's in progress. Anyway, if you don't have any cutouts, what you can do, you can still display your spectra. We're going to launch another inst instance of MOSFIS using this um, command at the top of the section. We've given it a different name so that it doesn't uh, take over the other instance of MOSFIS that we have up here. You can have as many MOSFIS viewers as you want, SpecVis, uh, MVis, other things that you're doing your analysis with. Um, here we've got a second instance of MOSFIS and um, here. Again, you can load. Here we're only loading the 1D and 2D spectrum. You uncomment the lines below and instead load just the 1D spectra or just the 2D spectra if you like. So running that cell. The moment to populate the viewer, you'll see that the table viewer comes up. One thing I didn't talk about before is that the columns in the table viewer are of limited use at this point. It says 2D spectrum 0, 1, 2, 3, 1D spectrum 0, 1, 2, 3. We're hoping to populate that with metadata from the headers instead, so we'll have more interesting, useful information on each spectrum that's displayed in the table. For now, you can select one of the rows, the another galaxy, um, like so. So that's our demonstration of the MOSFIS tool.